we're here up in Raven County, Georgia. Um, we were called up here to do an uh, on-site evaluation of a failed system. Uh, we had a soil report done. It came back with a very high water table in the ground. Uh, about three-fourths of the lot is uh, zoned a floodplain, so it's a very difficult site to, to work with. Um, when we got up here, we observed where the system had failed at. We had a chamber drain line uh, approximately 130 feet that kind of come right around through this area. Um, and contributing to the failure, of course, was the groundwater situation. Um, oversaturation during wet seasons uh, just made the effluent surface on top of the ground. So this is what we're really here trying to correct. We have a floodplain, we have a Stokoa Creek that eventually feeds into the Tallulah River that eventually feeds into all the lakes. So that's why it was of high importance to try to get this repair resolved with a very uh, efficient class one type system uh, to ensure that, that, that it would have long term use out of the new system. We're going to kind of go around of what we've got done so far. Uh, we'll start out with our control panel. Um, it's an SJ Rhombus installer friendly series time dose panel. Um, it's, this is a very good and reliable panel. Um, <clears throat> it, it, it'll give us a lot of back feed information on how many times the pump comes on, how long it runs, uh, how many times the alarms come on. It's just a real good control panel that we like to use. Um, we'll pick it up second. Um, here is our pipe coming from the residence, delivering the waste uh, flow stream. It'll just basically run down approximately 20 feet um, to a new style uh, infiltrator IM60 plastic tank. <clears throat> this is a pretty unique tank and it is a uh, injected molded plastic tank. Uh, it is a two-piece plastic tank. Um, it's got some rubber gaskets, dowel pins, clips that hold it together. Makes it very durable, very tough, um, very supportive. Uh, inside the plastic tank You can see one of the bulkhead petitions for strength on the top. This is our inflow piece coming into the six tank. This is the outlet portion of the six tank. There's a four inch filter. It's a poly lock. From there, the waste stream, the effluent, will flow into a concrete dosing tank. Um, this tank has been sealed, tar coated twice, wrapped in six mil Bisqueen poly plastic. Uh, we do that to protect the uh, possibility of groundwater intruding into the pump tank, which could be detrimental to the system, which would be delivered up to the future drain field area. How we try to ensure a waterproof pump tank is we have no seam in the side of our tank anywhere. This is basically a one piece. 42 inch, it's, it's actually half of a 750 concrete two-piece tank. And what they've done is Nick's Tank Company has formed the edge from the bottom that's got the V to the lid. It's a flat lid, four inches thick, that has that V finger down where you get a good seal where the rubber is at. Because it, once you get it in the ground, if it leaks on a pump system, and if it just takes on 100 gallons in a year, that's 100 gallons that just might be going in the system that takes a place of 100 gallons in the house. So that's kind of why we went through so much trouble on this wet lot to make sure we didn't have any water intrusion. Over here we have our old existing safety tank. Um, we have pumped it out. We have it prepared for to be crushed and filled. Uh, one of the reasons that we wanted to get um, a different style tank in the ground was this one was not waterproofed. Because of the groundwater issues, we were concerned that if we just put a pump tank in, that it might pick up some groundwater and deliver it to the drain field, which would be detrimental again to the system. Uh, the rest of it's pretty simple. Uh, just like you do any other pump system, we've got a, a it's a, a half horsepower, low head, um, a Liberty pump. It's designed because we have low pressure to be a little bit stronger because we're gonna have to maintain a certain amount of pressure in the, in the pipe to be able to flood the pipe quickly and to have our two feet of distal pressure at the end of all our trenches. That, that's why we really have more pump than it is for our height of pumping tube. 
Uh, we've got a check valve in line. We've got a union. We've got a pull rope. We've got a cutoff valve. Um, my wire for the pump is attached firmly with mm -hmm. zip ties to the, the pipe coming out of the pump. We have a separate float tree. That way, if you ever have to work on uh, the, 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 maybe a float just goes bad, but the pump's still working. So that way you don't have to disassemble the, the pump line to be able to maybe change out a float. It's a, a relatively simple process. Uh, <clears throat> I'm always pretty bad about making sure everything I do is color coded. That way, if, if, if I'm not the one here looking at it, maybe Dan will come look at it. He can look and see that we've got a blue wire and he come over here and the blue wire is attached to the blue wire. So it's real easy to figure out even if, if somebody else comes to look at it. With any experience at all, you should be able to figure out pretty simple what's going on. Um, I always start out blue at the bottom, yellow is the, the middle float and red is my alarm. Um, and, and the bottom float is actually a redundant off since we're using a time control panel, if they're not here, you wouldn't want this thing to be going off all the time. So when it gets to a certain level and the bottom float is turned off, it's just dead. It, 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 it just kicks a control panel in neutral and the clock just keeps spinning and spinning and spinning, but it don't activate the pump. Um, this is just a, a, almost like a little junction box or pedestal. Uh, all our factory seal wires come into here. Uh, I've got an oversized pipe that we can, it's real easy to pull all the wires in and out. No problem whatsoever to change anything out. Um, I put a four inch cap and then just cut a little hole, small hole in the top. And then this is pretty easy to pop off of the screwdriver when you get ready to change the wires out. The first step of installing any Elgin GSF system is excavating out your trench. You want to make sure when you're done that you scarify the bottom, make sure that the trench bottom is level, and scarify the sides you'll be ready to put the sand in next. In this case, this is ASTM C33. It's a coarse sand. We have six inches right now between the sand soil interface and the uh, what's gonna be below the units. So that's six inches total of minimum of uh, sand from the sand soil interface to there. What you're gonna do is you're gonna walk it in. You don't need to make it too tight, but you just need to remove the void space out of the sand. And the next thing you're going to do is just scarify the sand again, ready to receive effluent. The next step you want to do is you want to make sure you lay your module face up. You can know that the top of the module is marked by these white stripes here. You want to make sure that's equally distanced from the edges of your trench, as well as from the end of the trench, according to your plans. Uh, all installations here in Georgia will be using Schedule 40 pipe uh, with the orifice holes at 5 and 7 to let the effluent out into the module. What this contractor has done, he's put caps on both ends, and that's what's going to hold the low pressure pipe inside this distribution pipe. You want to make sure that your holes are right over the product, over the module at 5 and 7 o'clock. You can feel them with your bottom of your fingers. The next thing is there's a hoop. These are supplied with the product. You want to stand over the product, pressing down into the plastic core into sand. Next thing you want to do is you want to make sure you drill your holes in the center of each module, one per module. Uh, for your low pressure pipe. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to slide it right here into this distribution shield, into this orifice shield, and we'll uh, be ready to go and connect that to the rest of the system. The next step on this system is you want to put the cover fabric over the modules covering your distribution pipe. Uh, for this system, where you've cut the fabric and put it around the pipe here at the end and at the other end. We've taken small shovelfuls of sand, our ASTM C33, and we put it around here just to hold the fabric in place. Notice that we haven't pushed the fabric underneath the pipe or anything like that. The fabric is naturally over the pipe. We've backfilled the system with uh, seven inches of sand and we've walked it in with our feet. It's all done throughout the whole entire trench. And what we're going to do now is we're going to now use our cover with 12 inches over the top of the distribution pipe and the system's ready to go. Now we're standing down at the bottom of the system. We're looking up over it and we basically have four four foot wide Elgin trenches. Um, as you can see, we have our distal check pressure pipes, which is these stand pipes standing up. That allows us to check our distal pressure on the system. We should be required to have between two to four feet. Our first job is at about two. Last job is at about four. So that's where I can get a good check on my pressure. Um, we're going to leave the fabric off this last module where when we turn the system on we'll get a good example of where the water will be draining out of our little orifice holes. We have five on one side, four on the other, six inches on, uh, on, on apart from each side. 
we have our flow line coming through all of our orifice shields this is our connection point which is basically going to be our tying point with our flow to our return line going back to the trash tank uh, with the valve will be closed where it'll be a pressurized system but at some point periodically during the year they'll be able to open the valve and flush the system so this this section from here back going around will be our flush system